Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final fairy tale from New Zealand, and this story again comes to us from Piccaninnies. And this story is, yes, about the Piccaninny, but also, and mostly, about the bush babies. This is Kohai Blossom. The bush babies come out of the kohai flowers. They are the prettiest little things, fair as lilies with golden ringlets, and little golden peaked caps, bent over like a horn upon their heads. I don't think they wear anything much else, just an odd little fluff of green here and there, like stray feathers that have stuck to them. The piccaninnies love to play with them, indeed, they're favorites with everyone, and it's the prettiest sight in the world at early morning to see each bush baby crawling out of its cradle flower on its little tummy, yawning or smiling or stretching, or blinking at the light with round, sleepy eyes. But you would never get up early enough to see that. They tell a story in the bush about a bush baby and a piccaninny, and laugh about it to this day. The piccaninny told the bush baby that he would find honey for her. Now, the bush babies love honey better than anything else in the world, so she put her hand in his sweetly, and they set off. They came to the edge of the swamp where the tall, branching flax flowers grow. The flax is not in flower when the kohai is, but I can't spoil my story for that. And every flax flower was alive with birds dipping and sipping the honey, so the two little creatures wandered off again. The piccaninny led the bush baby to several others, but at every one some bird or insect would edge them away, crying out, We got here first! At last, the bush baby began to cry. They are very young and tender things, these babies, and this one had been caught and scratched by the bush lawyer, the most spiteful plant in the bush, and had nearly fallen into a creek and the peak of its cap was dangling into its eye, and it was a very long way from home. To comfort it, the piccaninny put his little brown arms right round it and loved it, and they both sat down on a fallen tree to rest while he wiped its eyes with a soft green leaf. They didn't know about pocket handkerchiefs yet. Oh! The next moment, out of a hole in the tree, flew a swarm of angry bees with humming wings and large fierce eyes and tails curved down to strike. The bush baby was so astonished that she fell off the log, and there she lay face down on the green moss, so still that the bees took her for a fallen kohai blossom and droned away from her. But the piccaninny ran for his life, with all the bees after him, and when the noise of their angry buzzing had died away, the bush baby got up and had a rare feast of honey and went back home very sticky and blissful and contented. As for the piccaninny, who had escaped the bees by lying down and pretending to be a tea tree jack, they call that camouflage now, he only sniffed when they told him about it and said, Pooh! I knew that honey was there all the time. I said I'd find her some, and I did. How like a boy. And that is... The Kohai Blossom. And I'm sure that I have just butchered the pronunciation of that particular flower many, many times. And I'm sorry. But I still love this story. It's a fairy playing with another fairy in New Zealand. And for our fairy tale week in New Zealand, you really can't get better than that, can we? This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, except for next week, where we'll be taking Monday off, as it's a holiday here in the U.S., Labor Day. 
Don't forget that if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can always head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, or for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to every story told. As always, thank you so much for listening.